now, now I have a children's message by Nora Harris, and then after that, Dr. Rick Lauer is going to be giving his message.
The point is, no matter what happens in the future, it's God's plan for you. So next time you look at a map, remember that your God is looking at one too. The map of your life. Enjoy the ride. Even though, even if you don't know where you're going yet, if, and if you're listening, God will tell you how to get there. So this is a prayer that we're going to say. Help me trust our timing and embrace the path that you've laid out for me. As I face challenges, let me draw strength from you, knowing your love surrounds me. Thank you for being a God who listens to my prayers, deep in my faith, allowing me to anchor myself in your promises. Your faithfulness, is, faithful, faithfulness knows no bounds. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> to have each of you on the service here today. And I have a question for you. How many of you like to receive invitations? Like getting invitations? I do. This time of year you get invitations to weddings. You get invitations to graduations. Sometimes you get invitations to barbecues or swim parties and things like that, it's always nice to be invited. Nice to be invited. Now, I hold in my hand today a book full of invitations. It's the biggest book there is of invitations. What is it? The Bible. The Bible is filled with invitations from God. All of us kind of know that passage of Scripture that says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, and whosoever will let me in, I will come in. What a picture. Jesus wanted to come into your life, into your heart, in your activities but he's on the outside you're here today you're on the inside you know what's going on in here because you know there was an invitation for you to attend service today and you came God so loved the world that he gave what his only begotten son why it's an invitation now, there's a chorus today, and I was asking Janet if she remembered it. I haven't sung it in years. It's an invitation that's been going through my mind last night and today. I have decided to follow Jesus. Conversion starts with the decision. A decision that you make what you want to do with your life I am going to get myself tangled here. It's an invitation you're going to make as to what you want to do with your life and what you want to do in response to the invitation of Jesus Christ. Now we all know the stories of Jesus in the in the Gospels when he found fishermen, taxmen, he found doctors, he found other people, he even found a tax collector and said to each of them, follow me. Now to do that, they had to make a decision. The first part of conversion is a decision. The second part of it is a miracle of divine grace where God changes your heart on the inside. It's called being born again. 
doesn't mean you have a rebirth physically, but it does mean that you have a rebirth spiritually within your heart. You know something changed in your life. And so that chorus that has been going through my mind that I can't seem to get out of my mind and I don't know why, I was asked in Janice this morning, I said, do you know this chorus? Because some choruses get lost. I have decided to follow Jesus. Do you know that chorus? Man, we used to sing it years ago. I have decided to follow Jesus. in my heart. Yesterday it was on my mind. I couldn't stop singing it. I found myself singing it this morning and I don't know why. Because the first part of conversion is a decision on your part to follow God. You say, why do you want to do that? Well, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. When He deals with your heart, He convicts you of sin. And then there's a drawing inside you that draws you to the Spirit of God and a desire to follow Jesus. You're not here this morning because you think that the Quakers are the greatest people around. I've been laughing this week. We got AC in the church for the first time in 325 years. We have the coolest Quakers in town. But that's not why you're here this morning. You're here because something inside your heart is drawing you to want to worship the Lord. I want you to turn with me this morning. If you're using a pew Bible, you're going to turn to page uh, 1672. And if you're not using a pew Bible, you're going to turn to Philippians chapter 2. And we want to share a few verses together. I'm not doing storytelling today, but uh, we're going to have a few thoughts that I'm going to share. I went away a few months ago. I didn't intend to be away as long as I was. I had no, no inkling of what I had opened the door to. But I shared with you something that Jesus said with his disciples on an inner circle uh, discussion with his disciple before he ascended to heaven. He was going away. And the thing he talked about, after all the things that Jesus had taught, the thing he talked about was their love for one another. A sign of Christianity, it produces love. It not only makes you love God, it makes you love one another. And Jesus said, don't tell me that you love one another and you love God if you don't love one another. And so my last message in the beginning of April is love one another. Now I want to give you a, a kind of like a continuation of that thought. Only this time it is not Jesus going away, it's the Apostle Paul going away. And he had a few thoughts he wanted to leave with the Philippians. So if you want to turn with me in your Bible, I want to read beginning in chapter 2 and verse 1. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. It says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any common sharing in the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded. 
Wow, that's a mouthful. Having the same love, being one in spirit and of one mind. Do nothing, nothing, nothing in the church or in your life. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. We're not out there tooting our own horn. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. And in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. Then I want you to stay in that chapter, skip down to verse 12. Therefore, my dear friends, that's before they heard a quickness. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life and then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. Hmm. That's a mouthful. Now here we have find ourselves, not Jesus getting ready to go somewhere. We're talking about Paul. He was the apostle to the Gentiles. He used to be Saul of Tarsus. He first persecuted as an overzealous Jewish Pharisee. He persecuted the Christian church. Didn't agree with them. Thought that they were opposed to everything the Jewish establishment and religion stood for. One day he met Jesus. Jesus stopped him dead on the road. The Spirit of God came upon him and opened his eyes spiritually and closed his eyes physically. He became blind that day. Couldn't see. Didn't know where he was going. That's a weird feeling. I don't know about blindness by day, but I do know what blindness by night is. I have what they call night blindness. Put me with as very little light I don't know where I'm at. You can be three feet away from me and I'll walk right into you, not know you're standing there. How do you feel? Very unsettling. You don't have your bearings. Put a flashlight in my hand and everything changes. I see the world as good as you do. I see everything there is around me. And there are times when the Spirit of God will take a spiritual flashlight to your life of mine and help us sometimes to see things we haven't been seeing. I never saw it that way. That's what the Spirit of God does. He takes this word, this book, and opens it up to you. It's a book full of invitations. God wanting you to follow Him. God wanting you to obey Him. God want you to believe in Him, to accept the plan of salvation He gave. It's not about a denomination. It's about Jesus Christ. God want you to follow Him, believe Him, accept Him, and live your life according to the way He would have you. 
Paul, Paul talks here, he said, you know, there are times when I'm with you as a church and time when I'm not. He was a church, had that experience for several weeks. I was away longer than I ever thought possible. I would have rethought the whole game had I thought it was going to be that long. That was been a long time. And some of you are wondering if I was coming back. And you're on your feeling that's good or bad. <laughs> you know, happy I'm here or you're not. But Paul said here, he said, there are two ways to serve the Lord. There's the way that you serve the Lord when I'm gone, and there's the way that you serve the Lord when I'm there. He said, I want you to have something within you that is spawned by the Holy Spirit. When you are a Christian, there's a lightness of mind that God puts within the heart of the believer. What are you talking about? Does that mean we're all going to like blue? No. Does that mean we're all going to like green? No. Does that mean we're all going to drive Chevrolet cars? No. What are you talking about? There's something about being around the people of God that gives you a sense of unity that you can't explain. One of the things I enjoyed the most when I was away was that I got a visit from some of God's people. They came in and sat down to talk with me, to pray with me, to encourage me. And a few came in to scold me. Get a moving, Pastor. We need you. We want you back. It was so good to see your faces, to hear your prayers. The best of all is to feel your spirit. That spirit of God that lives within your heart. The same Spirit of God that watched over Gary. And right back. There's a one likeness in mind to the people of God. There's nothing Satan likes anymore than a divided church. Because it means somebody's missing the mind of God. God. And the Spirit of God puts a likeness within the thinking of God's people. We believe in the Word. The Word jumps out and stands out to us as being a reference point, as being a guide, as being our encouragement, as being the test of our faith. And there's a light mind in us when we do it. I, I find it very interesting to find some words in the scripture. And uh, uh, I'm trying to find the spot that I'm looking for. Oh yeah, verse 14. Now, if you've got a different translation than what I'm reading out of, you may have a different word there, but it'll convey the same thought. Do everything without grumbling and arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. <laughs> you get the feeling? I, uh, I listened to a guy one day. I'm a, I'm a guy that loves trucks, big trucks. And this guy was having trouble driving the truck. Wasn't used to shifting gears in a truck. They don't like your car. Some are synchronized. Some you have to double clutch. Some you have to do a number of things to make it work. But he wasn't doing it right. And I'm looking at a $170,000 truck. 
And every time it shifted, it went <laughs> He didn't know how to get it from one gear position to another without grinding the gears. Cringe just listening to that truck go down the road. How long is this truck going to stay together? One of the gears going to shatter because they're being mishandled. Now the church of God is like that. When the Spirit of the Lord is in the midst of His people, it's a slow shift. The transitions within the church are smooth because the Spirit of God is in the hearts and the minds of God's people. I love picking Fred's brain. He's a nice person to talk to about God's Word. I like getting him alone and picking his brain. He's a good thinker. He's calling at me this morning, but he's a good thinker. And you know why I like talking to him? Because he loves God's Word. He loves it with all of his heart, with all of his mind. And wants nothing more to teach God's Word, to live it. What is doing that and what drives it? Spirit of God. It's a Spirit of God that drives it. And so I love having its money. Now the Scripture is telling us here, in this passage of Scripture, that there are a number of things that should be encouraging us as Christians. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, any common sharing of His Spirit, any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love. When you go down praying, what's the attitude that it leaves within your heart and your spirit? You want to be closer to the Lord? You like His Word? You love God's people? Is that what it does to you? If it does, you're on the right track. However, if you go down in verse 14 and you start talking about don't do things for grumbling and other things. That's not the Spirit of God that produces that. God's Spirit produces love, kindness, tenderness, like-mindedness. Want to follow the Lord. Remember now, the Bible is the biggest book in the world full of invitations. God wants you to follow Him. God has given you His Son as a human sacrifice hanging across to atone for your sin and mine that we might have eternal life. Invitation. God given. The challenge is us believing. The biggest challenge from chapter 1 of Genesis to the last chapter of Revelation, the biggest challenge is faith. Do I believe what God is saying? Some people have a hard time with that. I think of the dialogue that existed between Jesus and Peter. You remember Peter was the one that Jesus said at the Last Supper before the cock uh, sounds off. You're going to deny me three times. That was the night of his trial. The pressure that night was so great, Peter was shaking in his boots, and without us realizing that he denied Jesus three times in front of just a damsel. And so when Jesus got together with him before he went back to heaven, he pressed Peter, pressed him hard in front of everybody. Peter, do you love me? 
He has said, of course not. Why are you asking? Well, he said, well, you did deny me three times. Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. And then Jesus asked him again until he had asked him three times. Matching the three times that Peter had denied him. Peter, do you love me? And take care of my sheep. The work of the Holy Spirit in his church is to bring the body of the church together. until you pray for one another, till you love one another, till you do things to help one another. There's a quiet guy sitting here in church this morning. He doesn't have a lot to say, but he has a lot of actions. He kept showing up in my room, and now, come Sunday morning, he shows up at my house. Get in my car, I'm going to bring him to church today. I love this man. He loves God. He's not around to his horn. He's just doing what Christians do. Watch out for each other. And so today I want to say to you, in the spirit of love, in the spirit of Jesus, in the spirit of of Paul who was writing to the Philippians. Let the love of God and the mind of unity that comes from the Spirit of God fill your hearts and your think. I'm not going to make you think everything I think or me think everything, but you can sense <coughs> a sense of unity that as the Dutchman said, it's better felt than tell. There are some things that you can feel better than you can express with your words. And when God's people get together, there's a feeling of belonging to the family of God. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for loving Jesus Christ and for following Him in your life. Walk closely to Him. You know, Paul described the world in which he lived in as being twisted in his thinking. Boy, if Paul thought the world was twisted, then what is it now? We have a moral wheelbarrow that's been dumped upside down in our world. Values have been twisted and turned, and right is wrong, and wrong is right. And in this world that we live, may the Spirit of God draw you closer to God, closer each other until the coming of Jesus Christ all of us will hear the trumpet sound and something within us will make us respond praise the Lord David